Nobody likes management consultants. According to Opinion Train Survey 2020, it's only 1% of population who appreciate what management consultants do. Only 1%. Nobody likes management consultants because they are arrogant, money-driven, and career-focused. And I should know, I've been one for 15 years. But I believe one argument is missing. This is th that management consultants are drivers of transformation and change. And as proved by neuroscience, we humans uh, react to change and transformation rather as on a bad news. We feel, we feel uh, concerned, we feel doubt, we feel loss, and uh, we feel completely in the power of others. So basically, nobody likes management consultants because they are messengers of, of bad news. My specialty of management, as management consultant was the reorganization of support functions. A company areas like marketing, communication, finance, HR, standing in usually for, for 10 to 20 percent of corporate workforce, so extremely important uh, for the success of companies. In a team uh, with other consultants, we were challenging the status quo, we were searching for innovative and creative ideas, how to move on, how to develop further, and ultimately also searching for, for savings in the extent of few millions up to one billion. Savings and change are painful but necessary in order to succeed. When looking deep into the corporate structures and processes, I have seen so much time and talent wasted with time-consuming recurring tasks. Tasks like collecting of information, analyzing of information, visualizing of information, then meeting coordination, documentation, and answering the same questions or almost the same questions over and over again. Especially for those kind of questions, it's, I think, a good idea to ask, what's the impact of AI on such tasks? What do companies need to do in order to uh, remain competitive, and what do uh, we as humans need to do in order to remain attractive on the labor market? Will be all replaced soon by machines? There is already so much going on in the sphere of AI and AI-powered applications. This is an overview of 1,000 selected companies being active in the field of AI and, and data. Every of these logos represents an extraordinary team with talented people, many of them with unicorn status and, and powered by, by heavy in investors investing millions in disruptive ideas like, like this. Every of these logos, every of these teams has a unique vision of the, of the future they want to change the world, their world as we know it. Scary? What I personally find scary is that this is just the top of the iceberg. There are thousands and thousands of other teams around the world, world, maybe with even more talented, more motivated people, and also maybe with even more stronger and more revolutionary vision of the future, shouting, disrupt, disrupt, disrupt. And disrupt is other word for the change that consultants do in order to trigger transformation. So for me, it seems like it's not just management consultants trying to feel as uncomfortable, it's also all the entrepreneurs around the world. So the corona crisis, maybe some context also here, is just accelerating the adoption process of those technologies. As Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella commented already in April 2020, we have seen two years worth of digital transformation just in two months. Two years in two months, and this was April 2020. So, what is important to ask, because Corona is gonna away, but AI is gonna stay. So, so what can you do? How, how, how to benefit from the AI fireworks? In order to answer the question, I would like to draw a picture, to make a comparison in order to provide some context to, to what's going on, going on. I believe that the pursuit of AI is triggering an industry a revolution, an industrial revolution comparable with the in, uh, industrial revolutions triggered by the invention of engines, first steam engines and then combustion engines. But I believe 
The invention of engines triggered the, the invention of multiple use cases. So uh, engines were powering or still are powering uh, cars, trains, ships. They enable textile manufacturing, steel produ production and so on. So one rocket, big firework. One rocket, big firework. One technology powering multiple use cases and not just for a short time, for us, but for centuries. Applying this one technology or related technologies it allowed us humans to cross huge differences within a short time. It allowed companies to be much more productive and it also, as a consequence, reduced the cost of products and uh, improved the quality of our lives. Despite some obvious differences uh, between engines and AI, there are also some, some similarities, of course. First, the companies. The companies need to evaluate the way how they operate, the products they offer, while facing completely new competitors. On the other hand, we as humans need structurally and fundamentally to review our skill sets in order to remain competitive on the labor market. But the challenge is much bigger now. It's not just one rocket shooting to the clear sky. In fact, it's a multitude of AI technologies. Not just AI as such, it's, it's speech, image, pattern recognition, it's natural, natural language generation and natural language understanding. Many or every of these technologies has again a firework of multiple use cases. All the use cases are quickly evolving, they are overlapping and they are shining, but also disturbing and intimidating because the power of AI is not as easy to understand as the power of an engine in a car. So if we just maybe take one example, natural language generation by the well, uh, world famous GPT-3 model. One technology is enabling its creators and its users to create essays. It's uh, enabling them to, to, to write memos ba based on some bullet points. It's able to draft pro product slogans based on the product description. It's able to translate computer code from one language into another, and it's also able to write short, amusing horror stories. From, from my perspective, an important question is, which of these technologies and use cases are here to stay? Which of them are just sparks for a second, disappearing, and nobody will ask again? And which of them are here to stay and shine for a century? Or more concretely, what about you? What's the impact of this AI firework for your life? You as a student selecting the field of your study, you as a business person representing your company and for your career, or you as a parent navigating your kids uh, into the future. What exactly does it mean for you, for you and for you? Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, and I believe there is nobody else who knows. Uh, who knows. But I can tell you what I did, how I managed it, and maybe this will be of help or inspiration for you. Three years ago, I started to list all the recurring tasks in my business life as management consultant. Tasks and use cases which are recurring, nobody really likes to do. They follow a certain logic and you can basically imagine to automate based or using the sparks of the AI fireworks. Tasks such as uh, conducting research, file handling, pre creating presentations, and so on. I also started to link all those recurring tasks with the sparks of the, of the fireworks. I did not try to understand the whole complexity of it, because I believe this is just impossible. But if you select some of them, you can really dig deep, you can research on those, you can test them, you can experiment with them, and you will learn about uh, about the potential and the limitation of the technologies and also how they can help uh, you at work. And the good thing is that today these technologies are available for everyone. So you even as a non-programmer can try, you can experiment and you can also build something with no coding and for free. 
after I have uh, matched individual skills to uh, individual parts of the, of the uh, firework, there was still a piece missing. So I had many ideas and maybe many solutions, but how to put this together? Only after I have realized the power of natural language processing as the integrating part to put all these technologies together, since then I've been intrigued by the idea of creating the perfect body for business professionals, for, for management consultants or other uh, knowledge workers, uh, a virtual being, being able of multiple features, multiple skills, helping you at work. Knowing now the potential of all the underlying technologies and also the NLP as the integrating part, I see a new breed of software arising, I would say. I would call this breed of software AI super assistants or AI super assistants for business. These AI super assistants will be powered, of course, by, by AI, which continuously uh, involve, evolve. They will interact like humans do. They will have multiple skills or integrate the features of multiple applications. They will answer within seconds. They will never sleep. They will be never on vacation. They will talk in hundreds of languages. And they will know you and your preferences in order to support you at job as good as possible. I'm not talking about general AI here. General AI, which would outsmart us humans in general. I'm not talking about general AI, which would answer any question you can imagine or solve any problem you just come along. I'm talking about super assistants with multiple skills defined exactly for the needs of individual professional areas in the field legal, tax, health, but also management consultants. So, Maybe to support this point, Gartner predicted already back in 2017 that by 2020, the average person will have more conversation with bots and digital beings than with their own spouse. So I don't know what about you. So how about you? How often do you talk with bots, digital assistants and the like? Or do you work already maybe with some? Do you talk with digital beings at work being of help for you? I don't know how about you, but in my case, if measured by uh, conversations per month, Garten was definitely right. I communicate with bots four, three to four times more often than with my wife. I understand this is not representative, and uh, okay, it maybe tells more about my, the relationship with my wife than the adoption stage of the technology. But I think that no matter where your current conversation per month ratio with bots and digital being stands today, it will definitely significantly increase in the future. So, and this is especially when you daily de deal with tasks which fulfill the following five criteria. First, they are recurring. That means they appear over and over again and are therefore relevant in terms of time and money spent. Secondly, they are standardizable. That means you can standardize them. They are following a certain logic, certain structures, certain rules of a game. Without rules and without structures, it's extremely difficult for AI. The third criterion is these are tasks are covering a certain isolated universe. One universe could be, be company intelligence, market intelligence, physics, law, or health. Fourth point is the tasks which are uh, on the list uh, to, to be automated are tasks where it's important to execute them fast and in a consistent way. This is important in order to make the use case work and the business case work. And last but not least, it's essential that uh, you can deal or manage a certain level of fails by the AI. Because when building software with AI, we are making the software more human. That means capable of more amazing things, but also making mistakes like we humans do. Those characteristics of the tasks and uh, the tasks which other entrepreneurs, management consultants, or other bad guys will come and try to automate in the next months and years to come. How do you feel when I show this list of, uh, of uh, criteria 
And if you mirror the field of your study, your, your job you are going to, or if you just mirror it with, the, with your actual business life. Do you say, hey, Pavel, easy, easy, not relevant for me. I'm a specialist. I'm an expert. I don't care. AI, tell me whatever you want. It's not going to hurt me. I'm safe. Then I would say, come on. This field where you deal with complex topics in complex project setups with quite considerable daily rates, you find many of those tasks. So I believe no one is really safe. So I would like to challenge you if you say, come on easy. The other option would be, of course, Pavel, what are you doing again? So you are, you are driving me nuts, right? So what, why are you trying to feel, make me feel bad again? I'm doomed. I will be replaced by AI soon. So in this case, I would like to tell you two things. First, please check this list again yeah? and read carefully uh, what portion of your job is really fulfilling all those criteria, especially the last one, that you can deal with a certain level of failure. Yeah? Point one. And point two, please consider the most amazing, the most universal, flexible and efficient supercomputer there is out there. It's human brain, your brain. And I believe that AI will not replace us. This will, AI will help us to amplify our human talents. So when is the change happening? So I would say, of course, it's already going on. I will not count down all the use cases where AIs became already part of our daily lives. But uh, I would say I like the Bill Gates answer to change where he said that we as humans tend to overestimate the change going to happen in the next two years, but tend to underestimate the change that will happen in the next 10 years. Once again, because I believe when I also read first time this quote, I had to read again. So we as humans overestimate what happens in the next two years because the status quo is so extremely sticky, but we are dramatically underestimating the impact or the change that's going to happen in 10 years. So the good thing is there will be not a big bang. There will not come the big AI solution replacing now all the, change, all the jobs around the world. It will be a continuous change. But please don't underestimate the impact that will take place in 10 years. So, and this gives us humans, of course, some time to adapt, to get ready for this change. And maybe co-shape is design it for our own advantage. So, how do you find your spark in the AI fireworks? First message is, yes, you can. I would say open your eyes, open your ears, and especially open your mind for change. And this first concrete action, just open your browser and dig deep into individual sparks of the fireworks. Don't get intimidated, but all the buzz and all the firework, take it one by one, and you will benefit as a business person and as an individual. So thank you very much. Thank you.